Good morning, and thank you for listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is KWPBLP Newport, and it is the 13th day of January 2020, and this is Scott Albright here this morning with my friend Colleen McNeil. Good morning, Colleen. Well, good morning. And my pastor and good friend Dan, I mean, Rick, I've been <laughs> reading I've been reading Dan's book. Sorry about that. But <laughs> good morning, Pastor Scott. Rick Russell. Yes, indeed. It's good to be here. And we were kind of excited. We liked having Rick on so much the first time that we decided that sort of like Paul Harvey and the rest of the story. So I'm really kind of excited to hear what Rick has to share with us this morning. And it's interesting that I would say, Dan, and again, I'm I'm reading the book that I got for Christmas called Finish Strong. And Rick, you were such a big part of his life, and he is now serving... Uh, the Lord in a foreign country, a country where maybe you might have gone earlier if the Lord would have willed that for you. And Colleen, you were just talking about some people who need prayer, and you thought the fellow was from uh, Iran, and so maybe that was all in my head. And I'm thinking of foreign countries, and maybe that's why I said Dan. So my apologies, Pastor Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the Dan he's talking about is my oldest son. Yes. Uh, Dan is uh, serving on the mission field right now in Amman, Jordan been there about three months and his service there kind of comes out of a, a unique um, set of circumstances that have happened in his life about six years ago he was invited to come to uh, a place in Morocco in the middle of the Sahara Desert and work with a group of people called the Swahari people the Swaharis are the uh, oldest uh, wrestling community in the world they go back thousands of years uh, they have cave uh, hieroglyphs of wrestling moves that were done back in the in those days so they're the oldest wrestling society in the world and when God called him to go there he knew nothing about the Swaharis and then he 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 learned that they were the uh, family of a man that he's talked about thousands of times doing camps wrestling camps around the world and uh when he made that connection, he all of a sudden his heart for the people was just amazing. But through that process, the Lord has allowed him now on several occasions to speak to a minimum of 500 of the top imams in all of Islam from around the world. And he's been able to do that without impunity, sharing Christ, using the Quran to show Christ is the promised Messiah. And the reception he's had from the Islamic people is just amazing. Uh, he said to me recently, he said, Daddy, he said, I really believe like in Judaism, we have the Messianic Jew. He says, we're going to have Messianic, Messianic Islam. And that's what God has kind of called him to that area to be able to do. And, and, and the doors have just been open in miraculous ways for that ministry to take place. So, How exciting. And in fact, Father, right now we think about <clears throat> the people in Iran and Iraq and just that whole Middle East area. And Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Jesus, that you died for the souls of all nations, all nations. And so as we look at this big map that's here um, in the studio, we want to thank you and praise you that no matter where it is, way up in the north, the south, the east, the west, you died for every single one. We thank you and praise you that you said that your Holy Spirit is wooing and drawing them. And that's exactly what Rick just testified about his son, Dan. And we thank you and praise you that you are putting your words in Dan's mouth so he can share them with your precious people. So, Father, we thank you for the workers that you're sending um, to um, the, the nations around the world. And we thank you for their souls being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, you're listening to Winds of Praise. If you would like to text in a prayer request or some kind of encouragement, that would be wonderful. You could use my phone. That's 541-270-7855. We are broadcasting live on this Monday morning at 733 Pacific Time. And it's not raining right now. There's a calm in the storm, but the seas have been rough. And so we want to Thank you, Lord, for being with all of us, and we uh, thank you for your protection upon those uh, fishermen who are out there in the high seas, and uh, we give you praise that you have us in your hands, Lord, 
and we just we we love that and we appreciate that and we say thank you for being with us in fact you were mentioning that if someone had a prayer request well late last night i received a prayer request uh, from west virginia from my dear friend whose husband had suddenly passed away and one of her husband's um, uh, fellow uh, physicians their son uh, justin had been injured probably five or seven years ago in an accident where he severely uh, damaged his shoulder blade and just as each surgery that he's had things have gotten worse and he's just the most delightful young man and now he's dealing with severe amount of um, inflammation and so father right now just as we think about this precious family we think about justin and father the doctors cannot figure out what in the world is wrong made me think of the woman with the issue of blood she'd spent all of her money going to all these different physicians and she knew she knew if she just reached out and just touched the edge of your garment that she would be healed and so jesus right now we know as we lift this young man justin up before you and in behalf of him we're reaching out to touch you and we thank you for your healing touch from the top of his head to the bottom of his toes and father we think about his dad Otto, we think about his mom, Diane, and Father, you know exactly their needs. We thank you that you would just reveal yourself in an intimate and personal way to this family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So again, if you have a prayer request and you'd like to reach us this morning, 541-270-7855. And this is Scott Albright with Colleen McNeil and our guest, Pastor Rick Russell. Now, Rick, um, you were here a week ago, and you brought some notes, and we never even touched on the notes, and I mentioned it to Colleen because we do love to pray, and uh, you have notes, and you have an understanding of the Lord's Prayer uh, that I actually, Colleen said, let's get him back in here and hear the rest of the story, and tell us about how you, uh, how God spoke to you through the, the Lord's Prayer. Well, it maybe started in a couple different ways. One is the Lord's Prayer has always kind of been a quandary to me because Jesus was asked to teach us how to pray, and he used that as an example. So I think it's extremely relevant and important to us in our prayer lives. But 1996, I was teaching a Sunday school class, um, uh, and I had a college girl just home from college, and and I'm teaching on the book of James, and I'm, I'm at the scripture where in the book of James we're talking about uh, when you say you're tempted, don't say God tempts you because God tempts no man. And I had just shared that, and she says to me, she says, if James says, who was Jesus' brother, says God tempts no man, then why would Jesus in the Lord's Prayer have said, lead us not into temptation? And I looked at her and I says, I don't know. <laughs> I says, why don't you let me work on that this week? And I said, if the Lord gives me an answer, I'll bring it back to you next Sunday. Uh, this was Christmas vacation, so it was her first, first trip home from college as a college freshman. I struggled with it all week long. And in the process of struggling, I, I, something else raised a question to me that started with hers, and that was in Matthew 6, it says... Take no thought of what you should eat, drink, or wear. Seek first his kingdom. And those things will be given to you. So I looked at, at the Lord's Prayer, and it says, Give us this day our daily bread. Why would we pray that if he says take no thought of it? So that began to confuse me even more, and I struggled all week long. And it's finally Saturday, and then it's Saturday afternoon, then it's Saturday night. I still don't have an answer, and Sunday's a coming. And in the midst of my struggle trying to put that all together, the Lord gave me an epiphany. Uh, One of the hats I've worn in my life was I was an English teacher for a lot of years in the public school. And if I looked at Scott and I said, Scott, give me a cup, or I said, please give me a cup cup of coffee, he would know that the understood subject of that sentence is you, Scott, go give me a cup of coffee. If I take the Lord's Prayer and I put the understood you in the statements, it totally changes what the Lord's Prayer says. 
For example, you lead us not into temptation, but you deliver us from evil. You give us this day our daily bread. You forgive us our sins as we forgive the sins of others. When you put the understood you in there, you see the Lord's Prayer totally different. It, it's not us asking God to be our head butler and to give us this and to give us that and to do this and to do that. It's simply recognizing who he is. Our Father, which art in heaven, holy is your name above all names. You give us this day our daily bread. You forgive us our sins. You lead us not into temptation. You deliver us from evil. It's about who God is. It's just affirming. So when I look at the Lord's Prayer and Him teaching me how to pray, what He's teaching me to do is to focus on who He is. I don't have to focus on all the questions that I have. Uh, Colleen just shared with you a prayer for a loved one back in the East Coast who's struggling with this problem with his, with his shoulder blade. The most important thing to me is not that his shoulder blades healed, but that his heart comes into a relationship with God. That, that's, what's, that's what's so important to me because God says to you and he says to me, I will direct your paths if you seek me first and if you trust in me with all your heart and you try not to figure it out yourself. <laughs> but you, you put your trust in me and I'll, I'll direct your paths. God will direct paths to healing in our lives. He'll direct paths to all sorts of things in our lives if we put him first. And so I, I look at the Lord's Prayer today totally fresh, and I thank this little freshman girl coming home from college for the first time at Christmas for challenging my heart to look at a scripture because what putting the understood you in front of each one of those statements does is it harmonizes the Lord's Prayer with the Sermon on the Mount, with so many other questions in the Bible and, and scriptures in the Bible because seek first his kingdom and all its righteousness and all these things healing uh, uh, abundance understanding faith love joy peace all the fruit of the spirit it all comes from focusing on who God is and so many times in our prayer time we focus on the problems of our lives and focusing on the problem brings frustration and confusion. And there's hope that God will fix that problem, but God doesn't have to fix any of my problems. Well, and as you're saying about, you know, seeking him first, I'm reminded about my dear precious friend, um, Alma, years ago, uh, was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the mm -hmm. same that um, Jackie Onassis mm -hmm. had. And I... I just felt like, whoa, God, I just hardly even know how to pray for her. And I remember just, you know, just one of those downloads. And the Lord said, seek me first and my kingdom and my righteousness and all the other will be added unto you. So through the whole entire process, mm -hmm. we just continued to hold on to that anchor. It was like an anchor for like, you know, someone who is a sailor out on the ocean and so we just held on to that. And today, over 20 years later, she and her daughter are on their way to move to a new home back in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that and I think, thank you, Father, for that anchor that mm -hmm. held us steady. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you used the analogy this morning of the w woman with the issue of blood. She knew if she could touch Jesus, everything else would be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really true in our lives. If, if we just touch him, um, I, I've thought so many times, I've been pastoring for a lot of years, and, and what is my responsibility, what are my job as a pastor? And, and my job isn't to make people righteous. My job isn't to uh, make people moral. My job isn't to even be an encourager. My job is to, is to show by example how to draw close to God. And if the people in my congregation could draw close to the Father, all things work together then for good mm -hmm. for those that love the Lord. And so uh, the passion of my heart is, 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 is challenging and, and showing and, and encouraging people to draw close to the Father because, after all, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And um, um, I just... I was telling Scott this morning, my prayer life is pretty boring in the sense that I don't know what to say to God that he doesn't already know. I don't know what to say to him that, that is smarter than him. 
and I don't want him to be my head, head butler. So my, my prayer life for the last 30 years has been fairly simple. I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I do is grab my Bible and my notepad and say, good morning, God. And at that point in time, my jabbering's over with because I just want to listen. What, what do you have for me today? And I don't have to even ask him for that. I just greet, greet him in the morning and sit with him, and, and he f feeds into my life, and he, 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 he puts my day together. And, and I'm so thankful for just being able to come into his presence and, and let him have his way. And, um, you know, I, I was sharing with Scott this morning before we went on air. Uh, I don't know what God's doing in Scott's life. I don't know what God's doing in Colleen's life. I, I really don't even know most of the time what he's doing in my life. So how do I even know how to pray so many times? So I just, if, if I'm thinking about our young man that, that we just prayed with that, about that has this shoulder blade issue, his name's Justin. Not knowing how to pray for him, what I visualize in my mind is just putting Justin in the palm of my hand and holding him up into the, into the presence of God. And I said, when I, do that in my, when I do that in my prayer life and I hold him up there, I bring him into the Shekinah glory of the Father. God knows what he needs. God, God knows everything about Justin and what's going on in Justin's life. I don't know anything about Justin. I don't know anything that's going on in his life. I don't know what God's doing. Maybe God's going to use this bad shoulder blade to draw him to him to, to God to himself, and I don't want to get in the way of that happening. My father was a chronic alcoholic, and um, I had been preaching for almost forty years. My father had never heard a sermon that I preached, and never darkened the door of a church. And the last years of my father's life, I began to pray for him, God, whatever you have to do to bring him to you, I just put him in your hands. My father went through the three bouts of cancer. And it was during his third bout of cancer, he, he lived in Idaho, but he had come to Portland. I lived in Portland at the time because he was a veteran and he went to the VA hospital to be treated for his cancer. So on his third trip to us, we're setting one evening, starting about 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday night. And the Lord finally gave me words to share with my father. And he bowed his head at my kitchen table at two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning and asked Jesus to come into his life. It took three bouts of cancer for that to happen. Well, whatever God has to use to bring us to the end of ourselves, whatever God has to use to draw us close to him, God, please do that in each one of our lives. So for me, embracing, if he's directing my paths, then when good things happen, praise the Lord. When bad things happen, praise the Lord. I don't have to be on a roller coaster in my life emotionally because I believe with all my heart everything that goes on my life, God is directing my footsteps and I can praise him for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, uh, I, I'm probably a pretty boring pr pr prayer at having me here for a prayer time is probably not necessarily even a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I love God, and I know God loves me, and I know God loves you, and that whatever is going on in your life, God is in the middle of it. Whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, God is in the middle of your life, and he's, he's messing with you just like he's messing with me. Um, I was sharing it with my congregation that, that when uh, Jacob was wrestling with God, um, God said, that's enough, let's quit. And Jacob said, I'm not letting go of you until you bless me. And he said to Jacob at that point in time, he said, no longer will you be called Jacob, which means deceiver, but from now on you're going to be called Israel, which means wrestler with God struggling with God and I thought what a blessing that is because there came a point in my life when at age 16 that I entered into a struggle with God I didn't know who God was before I was 16 years old I didn't know who he was but from 16 to today I struggle with God every day what a great struggle that is trying to figure out who he is and what he's doing and how he's doing it and who he's doing it with and and I sure have more questions today at 73 years of age than I did when I was 16 uh, rather than more answers, but I do know God is, and I'm not, and I know God is guiding our lives and loving on us and drawing us close to himself with whatever goes on. So, um, well, And you're such an example of the fact that, like you were saying, like you wake up in the morning and you say, good morning, God, 
that's exactly what Jesus did. I mean, he went every morning, hung out with his father mm -hmm. to find out kind of what was on the the agenda for the yeah, day. Absolutely. And then when the disciples would come and they would be kind of pushing and wanting, you know, their agenda or somebody else's agenda, you know, it was like, no, he already he already knew mm -hmm. the, the direction for the day. Mm -hmm. And I hear you saying the exact same thing that you know, God has established the direction for your day. And then as you shared, like as the young lady asked you the question about leading, leading us not into temptation, but delivering us from the hands of the evil one. I mean, it's like, I remember when the girl that was going to commit suicide and her mom called and was so frightened because she was in a lockdown facility because she had tried to commit suicide three pretty successful times already. And it was like I felt so inadequate. And it's like I just ran to the Lord to say, oh, this is life and death. And, and I, I just need your wisdom. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I need to know what to do. And just so gently, so gently, it was like, you know, like you're saying, he leads you not into temptation, but delivers you from the hands of the evil one. So we just held on to that, that scripture. And that young lady is well and healthy to this day. Amen. Amen. You guys are amazing. I could just sit here and listen to both of you talk. And as as you are talking, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, God does tell us to pray for our leaders, and he does tell us to pray for even the peace of Jerusalem. And, and I'm thinking of what you just said, Pastor Rick, about maybe we don't know exactly how to pray, but we can lift up our leaders uh, to the Lord. And, in fact, we'd like to do that. I'd like to do that right now, Lord. I, I thank you for our country, and I thank you for the leaders that you have put into place. I thank you for the kings of the earth that you have established. Your word says that you bring up kings and you take down kings. And Lord, you do care for every person, and you look at their hearts. And so, Father, all we can do is lift up, if it's possible, every person of this earth and ask that you would continue to have your work done in them, Lord, that you would continue to draw all men to yourselves, to yourself. And we pray specifically for the leaders of our nation in Washington, D.C., who are going through great trial and battle right now. Um, I, one of the candidates says we're in the battle for the soul of the nation, and I think that's right, Lord. We ask that you would cause hearts to turn to you and that we would be a nation that follows after you, Lord. You love righteousness, and we pray for your perfect will. And we pray that down into our communities, Lord, to our, our city and to our county and to our state. Again, we pray that you would uh, pursue and, and, and cause the leaders that you've put into place, Lord, to turn to you, whether they have done it in the past or not. And we also pray for our world uh, Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing in this great world that you've created. You know every person that you have caused to be born right now who's living. And we lift them up before you and just say, your will be done, Lord. And bring your peace upon us like no one else can do. Uh, we pray for your perfect order in Jesus' name. And in fact, kind of as um, Rick was talking about each morning, mm -hmm. as he says, good morning, and he opens up his Bible and and reads wherever it is that you know he's at at that time and what kind of came through my mind was like maybe perhaps he's in psalm 91 uh the prayer of protection and so as you read that psalm and you know maybe there's someone you know maybe you have a family member who's a fisherman out on the ocean and so you take that psalm and you tuck that person's name into that psalm and just pray that back to the lord or maybe perhaps yeah. you put uh, President Trump because God tells us that we're to pray for those who are in authority. So for eight years, we prayed for President Obama, and now we're praying for President Trump. Mm -hmm. And so maybe then you tuck that person's name in and turn that into uh, your prayer. That's a, that's a great way to pray. As you were talking, Colleen, I, I recognize and remember that I've been here in Newport now for 40 years. Uh, practically to the month and I knew a fisherman back in that day uh, who had memorized Psalm 91 then and, and you mentioned fishing and, and Psalm mm -hmm. 91 that prayer for protection 
And I was just astounded. It's like, wow, how could you memorize scripture like that? But he did, and he prayed it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very effective way to pray. Pray back his, pray back God's word. You know, here's what you said, and mm -hmm. we pray this mm -hmm. over this person. A month ago, I, I finished the book uh, by Jonathan Kahn called The Oracle. If you haven't read it, I sure highly recommend it to you. But the, the overall theme of the book uh, that I walked away with. I mean, there's the w wonderful things in it, but the overall theme is that God is in control. And you, when you read it, you see how intricately he's weaving our history to, together to bring us to where he wants us to be. And it was such a, a, a blessing to me to see how active God is in our world every day and how he is weaving together a fabric um, I've thought many times our life is a tapestry, and if you've ever seen a beautiful tapestry, it's it's an amazing thing. If you look at the back of a tapestry, it's all knots and and loose strings and stuff like this. It has no pattern at all. You look at it, it just looks like a mess. And so oftentimes, we spend our time at the back of a tapestry looking at the mess, not coming around to see the absolute beauty of what has been created. And so. Uh, God is active in our world today. As Scott was praying for our world, uh, I, I guess maybe having a son abroad, and especially in the, in the midst of all that's going on right now, he's, he's sitting right in the middle of all the conflicts that are happening. Uh, but every day that we communicate, uh, I just see the majesty of God and how he's working and what he's doing. And, and you know, when we, when we think about, we have an attitude sometimes to have uh, villains and heroes but, you know, the, the Islamic people are all a part of the seed of Abraham, just like the Jewish people and just like the Christian people, even though we had to get grafted into it. But we are brothers and sisters, and, and God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. And so, you know, as we, as we lift the world up into the Shekinah glory of God, uh, know this, he is working with our, with our countries. He's working with our leaders. That's why he tells us to pray for him. Is uh, there's amazing things that are going on, uh, of which we know very little about. But I do know this: God is in control. Mm -hmm. Well, and even as uh, Scott mentioned about Psalm 91, um, in there's like a little footnote in one of the things that I was reading about Psalm 91, and it was telling about during the World War One, um, the commander uh, fellow he wanted that. Um, psalm to be read over his oh, troops yeah. every morning you know before you know the day started and none none of his men were killed on the front line and I just think you know father thank you so much that you hear our prayers yes, and thank you that you do protect us and thank you that sometimes you tell us we have not if we ask not and so I think about that gentleman how he knew that he needed to come to our Father and ask protection for his men. Amen. You're listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is KWPBLP Newport and Colleen McNeil, our special guest, Pastor Rick Russell and myself, Scott Albright. Uh, Pastor Rick, I mentioned I called you Dan by mistake, and that's your son whom, whom we talked about. And the book that I'm reading right now, I'm right in the middle of it, uh, is his story, but it's also your story, and it's it's quite amazing the perspective of a son writing the story of how he was raised and uh, how much uh, you taught him, and as his coach and and as his leader, you know, you instilled a lot into him, and and I'm I'm really excited about reading through the middle of the book, but it's called Finish Strong, is it not? Yes. I'm wondering, did you have anything to do? I don't know why it's called that yet, but did you have anything to do with that title? No. Nope. <laughs> no, nope. that was totally totally his decision. Because you instilled a, a hard a, a work ethic. It's it says in the book that uh, you're quoted as saying the biggest thing your father was that gave you was hard work. Absolutely. And, uh, you are yeah. a, a proponent of working hard, but as you say this morning, resting in the Lord and waiting on Him, and not trying to do it yourself. You've heard, you've heard me say before, I used to be a verb of action. I've now become a verb of being. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful, uh, set me free when I realized I didn't have to earn God's favor. Oh, amen. God gives us his favor. And so resting in him is, is, is a wonderful gift of the Lord. And unfortunately, 
so many Christians never find that rest. And well, and what I love, I love the, the analogy that he is the vine and I am a branch. <laughs> and having grown up in the Hood River Valley with lots of different <laughs> kinds of fruit trees, I've just never noticed those branches struggling to stay attached. <laughs> and I don't notice any of those little blooms that come on, you know, before the fruit. I don't notice them struggling either, and I don't notice the fruit struggling. So it's kind of like, hey, Colleen, kind of just abide and allow me to just flow through you. Let God do the tapestry weaving, That's it. Mm -hmm. Pastor Rick, would you honor us with uh, closing us in prayer? Sure. Father, we just rest our spirits in your presence. We thank you, Father, for the daily love you shine on our lives. We even thank you, Father, for the struggles that we have because we know that that's growing us up to become the men and the women that you've called us to. You make us useful in your kingdom. And Father, we thank you deeply for that. I pray for those who have been listening to the broadcast this morning, Father, that you would just put your arm of protection around each person. Uh, let them sense the holy presence of you in every moment of their day. And Father, that you might be lifted up and you might be glorified because of the presence that you've created in our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you for coming. And again, if you're listening to the broadcast at 98.7 FM or online at Winds of Praise and you'd like to make contact with us, use my phone and it's available to you. It's 541-270-7855. You want to talk to Pastor Rick or Colleen, uh, I can get you in touch. So, amen. 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 And uh, the Lord willing, we'll be back on Monday to pray again from 730 to 8. It's a a wonderful time. In the meantime, you get to listen to lots of uh, good music and scripture. And we value what the Lord is doing here and in your life. And and we ask that you would draw near to him. Amen. 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 Thank you. And we'll continue with our normal programming right now.